All right, so uh, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. It's my pleasure work, uh, speaking here today. And before I proceed forward, I want to thank to all the organizers of Pune Tech community for hosting all of us here. I have been following this community from quite some time, and I must say that all the organizers of this uh, community are doing a wonderful job in making knowledge readily available for free. Alright, so proceeding forward, quick introduction of me. Uh, my name is Anshu Kesarwani and uh, I have more than 10 years of experience in this space and most of my work is focused on helping our customers in their UC transformational journey. Uh, that could be from any old legacy PBX or Sky for Business to Microsoft Teams. And uh, I also enable our customers in redesigning their uh, meeting room spaces. Uh, selecting the right device and procurement of those devices and finally defining a path to follow or refresh uh, older meeting room computes and make the configuration work with Microsoft Teams. And uh, apart from that, I also own a blog, anshukesavani.blog. I'll share the link uh, over the chat window. And uh, this is where I share my insights around Microsoft Teams and related products and uh, the latest features and updates. Uh, please do visit uh, whenever you get the time. So moving on to the agenda. Uh, so today I will discuss about all the PST and connectivity options that are available in Microsoft Teams. Uh, however, I will focus more on the decision points as in why you would choose which model rather than talking about <clears throat> how to enable it, uh, their licensing requirements or similar kind of questions. Uh, for, for example, you might have a legacy UC infrastructure with local PBX and you want to move to teams. So today's discussion will help you in deciding uh, which are applicable options and you can uh, prefer. Having said that, uh, if you want to know more on how the PSTN connectivity option works and how to enable it, uh, if you have these kind of questions, I would say you can uh, go through the previous session that was delivered by Satish. All those details are covered up in more details there. So. Today I will discuss first call-in plans and its uh, decision points, uh, then moving on to the operator connect and its decision points, and then to direct routing and finally Teams phone mobile, uh, which was previously known as uh, operator connect mobile 2. All right, so moving on to the first slide, uh, the first in the list comes Microsoft calling plan option for domestic and international calling. So here you procure a license from Microsoft and assign it to uh, users. The phone number can either be ported to Microsoft from local providers or new numbers can be procured. Now, uh, if I talk about the decision points as in where you can propose uh, calling plans. The first factor is that it requires uh, no setup. L let's say you are dealing with a customer where uh, customer requires their users to adopt Microsoft Teams and a greenfield deployment of PST and connectivity with Teams. You can choose for the calling plan in this scenario, provided that it is available in the country uh, where you are uh, hosting your users. Just let me take the pointer to. OK, so moving on to the next decision point on which where to choose calling plan depends on its availability in the country where your users are located. It can be the case that calling plan is not available uh, to purchase in the country where your users are, for example, India. Uh, in such cases, you might have to think about other options like direct routing. We will discuss the direct routing later. And, uh, the next important factor on which uh, the decision to choose calling plan depends uh, is customers willingness to move away from their on premises infrastructure. I'll, I will try to give you an example here. So let's say in the existing UC landscape of an organization. They have Cisco call routers and uh, CUCM clients. 
uh, in the current scenario, they place call to let's say a mobile number from their uh, Cisco clients, and then it goes to call router, uh, which forwards the call to associated local uh, telecom carrier like uh, BT, Orange, AT and T, etc. Now, customer plans to move away with all these on-premises dependencies uh, like Cisco router or the servers, local telecom dependencies. Uh, in such cases, calling plan could be an option. Uh, the customer can get the existing line URIs assigned to the users, ported uh, to Microsoft using port order. And once the numbers are ported or the new, new uh, numbers are procured from Microsoft, you can enable users with calling plan license and assign the same number. And at the end stage, you can think to decommission your uh, on-premises Cisco deployments. Uh, the next point is that you want Microsoft to my manage all the services with no dependencies on third party providers or telecom uh, careers. Everything will be owned, managed and supported by Microsoft with only administrative tasks uh, with customer. So uh, this was regarding the calling plan. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So this is the another option, which is Microsoft Teams Operator Connect. Uh, okay, so Operator Connect is just the another option for providing public switch telephone network uh, PSTN connectivity with Teams and phone system. Uh, in, in this model too, you are getting everything on cloud with no on-premises dependency. Uh, the numbers are provided by telecom providers sitting behind Microsoft through Microsoft Operator Connect program. And if you want to see the list of all careers certified within Operator Connect program, you can see it uh, in the operator directory. I'll soon share the link for uh, uh, this Operator Connect directory. Now, uh, Coming to the decision points. Where you want to opt for operator connect model to enable Microsoft Teams PSTN connectivity. The first factor is uh, same as with calling plans. Uh, you want fast and simple deployment with no dependency on the on premises devices. And here you just need the correct licenses and numbers assigned to your users by selecting appropriate operator from the directory. Uh, Next one is that calling plan is not available in the region or country where you want PSTN services from uh, Microsoft Teams. So in those cases as well, you can opt for uh, Operator Connect. Another uh, important factor which might make Operator Connect as a preferred option is that your existing local telecom provider who is currently providing services to your PBX systems, let's say, is also a participant in the Microsoft Operator Connect program, and you are thinking to move your reliance on PBX system uh, to Microsoft Teams. I'll, I'll give you an example on this. Uh, let's assume you are a business organization located in Switzerland. Uh, currently, your organization's users are making PSTN calls uh, from PBX phones. Uh, the call emerges from PBX uh, phone client, goes to PBX call router, and from there it is routed to your telecom career, Swisscom in our example. Now, as a business analyst in my organization, uh, I analyzed uh, various other benefits of Microsoft Teams apart from uh, PSTN calling, and now the plan is to move uh, and enable Microsoft Teams for your uh, organization, plus transfer the PSTN workload to Teams. Now, one of the ways to transfer the PSTN workload is to check your existing uh, telecom career, Swisscom, if it is in the Operator Connect program, uh, which they are, and then ask them that uh, you will be moving to Teams and will be assigning the same line URIs uh, there as it is assigned currently in PBX phone for all uh, users. Uh, this way you can leverage your existing telecom contracts and migrate towards uh, Operator Connect. And another point is that uh, uh, with Operator Connect, you get enhanced uh, support and reliability as there are no dependencies on any on-premises systems. Uh, so chance of failure or downtime is very low 
and uh, the services are governed by SLS defined by Microsoft and telecom providers. So uh, this was all about the uh, operator connect. Any questions so far uh, related to calling plans or operating co operator connect from anyone? OK, I'll take it as a no. So now moving on to the third model, which is direct routing model. And uh, this is where you place a certified session border controller, either physically or virtually, which integrates uh, different heterogeneous telephony systems with Microsoft Teams. Uh, with Teams direct routing, you get the most fl flexibility in terms of choosing the right telecom careers for you, choosing the technology for your telecom trunks, managing the complete infrastructure end to end, etc. Now, if I if I talk about the decision point, why you would want uh, direct routing as a preferred option to enable Microsoft Teams PSTN connectivity, uh, the first important factor is that you have heterogeneous telephony elements in your organization. Uh, and you want intercall routing among all these uh, uh, telephony elements. And these telephony elements could be anything like a contact center, analog devices, PBX phones or DEC phones. And the type of call routing you would like to establish is like an MS Teams uh, user wants to make a call to an analog phone or a PBX user wants to make a call to Microsoft Teams user and similar kind of call flow scenarios. And all of these call routings are possible with session border controller in place. In the real world, these situations arise uh, due to certain requirements of organization, for example, they want to enable Microsoft Teams for their users for collaboration purpose and still want to keep PBX system working for some region. In such cases, it is usually preferred to opt for direct routing to maintain flexibility uh, to its maximum and interoperability among different systems involved. Now, next decision point is that calling plan or operator connect services are not available in a particular uh, region or country. So you will have to choose direct routing in that case. And then let's say you plan to migrate your UC workload to Microsoft Teams by using the same telecom contract you already have uh, with your existing careers that might be today providing your uh, telecom services to you, your PBX or CUCM or any legacy UC platform for that matter. Uh, you can choose direct routing in these cases. You just have to unassign the uh, phone number from users in legacy telephony platform, configure session border controller for direct routing, and reassign the same number to users in Microsoft Teams. And the next factor uh, is you have very complex uh, dialing routing patterns uh, with multiple telephony systems involved. And another thing to consider is your existing investment. So uh, I'll, I'll give you an example here. Let, let's say you have an organization who are heavily reliant on Skype for Business Enterprise Voice. And for that purpose, they have already procured physical session border controllers for each region locally. And in addition to that, they also have, a, 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 let's say, secondary session border controllers in each region to maintain redundancy and high availability. So you see how heavily the customer is invested for their telephony infrastructure or with the sky for business. So in, in such cases, direct routing uh, could be a preferred option because the same session border controllers, if they are certified with Microsoft Teams as well, which uh, should be the case uh, if they are getting used uh, for sky for business previously. So the same session border controllers and the existing telecom contracts can be utilized to provide uh, Microsoft Teams PSTN services. And the next decision point is the availability of telephony trunks from uh, telecom carriers. Uh, there are some countries where you may not get SIP trunks from your chosen uh, uh, providers and uh, physical lines like E1 trunk or T1 trunk is the only option of connectivity between uh, the session border controller and the telecom career. 
so in these cases, you you can opt for uh, direct routing since SBCs can be designed and uh, modified architecturally uh, to work with both SIP trunks or physical trunks. And another important point I forgot to mention in this slide is to deal with the telecom regulatory compliance needs. So there are some cases, for example, in India uh, where you are not allowed to bypass the tolls to decrease the long distance uh, calling cost. Uh, you usually must configure location based routing in such cases, which is possible with Microsoft Teams direct routing infrastructure. I will I will not go deep in this particular topic for now, but planning to give another session around uh, location based routing because. Sorry, is there any query? OK, uh, so. Uh, I mean. Oh, I will not discuss about this uh, uh, location based routing <clears throat> as of now because I am planning to give another session uh, uh, later because I get many queries, especially from Indian customers on this topic, and they often find themselves confused due to lack of clarity. OK, so this ends uh, Microsoft Teams direct routing. Next, moving on to another model, which is Teams phone mobile. So. Everyone who are in the call, any uh, questions uh, so far with respect to calling plan, operator connect, or direct routing? Okay, I'll take it as a no. So, uh, the last model, uh, which is the Teams phone mobile, uh, it got a name change recently and is now called as Teams Phone Mobile, but earlier it was known as Operator Connect Mobile. And uh, this is the latest offering from Microsoft among all the available PST and connectivity options. Now, what is Teams Phone Mobile and how is it different from Operator Connect? Uh, let's talk about this uh, before proceeding towards uh, its decision points. So with Teams Phone Mobile, uh, a user's SIM enabled phone number is also their Teams phone number. So you are actually having one single number uh, for your uh, native mobile dialer via SIM card, and the same number is also assigned to you in Teams. And users can use a single phone number in Microsoft Teams across uh, both their mobile service and desk lines and seamlessly transition between networks and devices. Now let's move to the decision points like. Uh, why would you prefer uh, the Teams phone mobile? So the first point is which we have already touched that you want one single number for both of your mobile phone native dialer and Teams, and you want a seamless transition when you uh, when your network changes. with the same uh, field support engineer also playing as uh, desktop uh, support agents and expect to use the same primary phone number from their Teams client or Dex phones. Another important factor to consider Teams phone uh, mobile is that your users have a requirement to use primary company owned SIM enabled mobile number uh, for Teams phone as a single number solution. Basically, it's the same thing that we already discussed. Uh, the next factor is that provider whom you are uh, you have already opted to choose uh, to provide uh, PSTN services and Microsoft Teams is also a member of Microsoft Teams phone uh, mobile program. And then you might be enabling Microsoft Teams for the first time and uh, uh, looking for options to enable PSTN calling too. I think. Uh, Teams phone mobile should be your preferred option to consider as it's a next generation thing in the market and it brings PSTN connectivity uh, to next level. OK, so uh, till now we have talked about calling plans, uh, operator connect, direct routing and uh, uh, Teams phone mobile. So. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, 